Hi, I'm Larry Richardson, your step-by-step -step chef, and I am in the Pacific Northwest as part of cooking and camping with the step-by-step -step chef. Specifically, I'm at a campsite, a primitive campsite, near Mount St. Helens. And I've been driving all day. I came up here from way, way back in around Bend, Oregon, and I am hungry. I'm ready to eat, but I'm not just ready to eat. I've been on the road for six weeks and I need comfort food. Sometimes you need comfort food. It can't just be camping food all the time. So I am going to show you how to make a meatloaf burger. Meatloaf is one of the ultimate, ultimate comfort foods from home. So let's have a little bit of a taste of home in the middle of nowhere. So let me um, show you the ingredients and come on, let's cook. So here are the ingredients for our meatloaf burgers. Now, the reason I'm making meatloaf burgers is I don't have an oven, so I can't make regular meatloaf, but I can make meatloaf in a frying pan. So I have um, just over, just over a half a pound of the best hamburger I could afford. I have one egg. I'm going to use about a third of a cup of this onion. I'm going to use, oh, I'd say about half of this sandwich round. And that'll come out to about a quarter cup. This is gonna substitute for our breadcrumbs. I'm going to use, um, uh, let's say a teaspoon of salt, um, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and half a teaspoon of garlic salt. If you want to use real garlic, and you can actually find yours, I, I lost mine somewhere in the car. Oh boy, it's going to show up one day with a vengeance. But we're going to use garlic salt to give it that garlicky taste. Now, I just want to make a point that in order to make this truly a comfort meal, I also bought some dried mashed potatoes. Um, I bought a small can of corn and I bought some savory beef gravy. And those will just add to the meal. Those are the side dishes. And you know, I'm probably going to cook the sour cream and the chives with the corn mixed in and then drop some gravy on top and heat it up. And since those are like pre-made, I'm not gonna show you how to make that, but consider like a side that also has that comfort ring to it. And the last thing we have is bear spray, mainly because I'm in the middle of nowhere and should a bear show up uh, uninvited for dinner, I want to make sure that I have my bear spray. And I just want to make one point that on stepbystepchef.com, I do have videos on how to camp, essential camping gear, and uh, tips on how to make a successful and comfortable trip. And one of the ways, if you're going out in the, into bear country, is to make sure you have a little bear banaka just in case. So I'm just going to keep that handy. Don't add that to your, um, to your, uh, your um, meatloaf burgers. <laughs> so let me show you how to put all this together. Okay, so here we go. Um, first of all, I just want to point out that I'm working under very tight quarters. I have my little shorty table. I don't bring a big table with me because it's a big pain, and, <laughs> and then I regret it. But here I am out here, I'm kind of crouched down and we're going to cut the red onion first. We're just gonna mince it. We don't want huge pieces of red onion in our um, meatloaf burgers. So I'm just cutting the top like this. And this onion, interestingly enough, it looks all beat up, but it has not starred in any other Step-by-Step -step Chef video. It's just one that I was eating when I was down in Bend and I never got a chance to do any cooking programs down there. I know, I'm sorry. It would have been so cool. There were just too many people around. So I'm just cutting the top of the onion this way. These are parallel lines close together. And then we're going perpendicular. This is the step-by-step -step chef backwoods food processor at work. This is the way the settlers did it when they made their meatloaf burgers on the wagon train. 
So then I just cut down the face until I have my third of a cup of onion. And I like, I like my meatloaf oniony. I also have um, meatloaf recipes on Step by Step Chef, uh, more traditional ones that you can make at home. This is really the scaled down. I've been camping, I'm hungry, I want comfort food, and it will do perfectly. You will like this recipe. It's just so easy. You're getting meatloaf without having to bake it for 45 minutes in an oven. And trust me, that's something you don't want to try with a propane stove. You don't want to have it on for 45 minutes. It will cost you a fortune. So, we're just going to take the onion, toss it over there. There we go. And then we're going to make our breadcrumbs using the other step-by-step -step chef food processor. Now, I have these gloves on because um, last night I had to wrestle a mountain lion. Yep, that's the way it goes. Sometimes you, you get up late at night and you walk out of your tent and there's a mountain lion. So I cut my finger. It was either that or I did it reach, <laughs> reaching into my um, shaving kit and I got attacked by my, um, my double blade razor. I should have looked. Uh, that's another tip. That's another camping tip. Free from cooking and camping with the step-by-step -step chef. And I hope you will check out the series because um, the recipes are kind of scaled down and it's stuff that you can make at home too. You can set up your tent in your living room and um, make these on your stove. Do not light a propane stove in your house or a grill because the, um, the gases from it will probably knock you out. Um, but these recipes also go really well and they're all tasty when you just make them, make them at home. So it's not just stuff that you make on the road. So I'm just making these little breadcrumbs and you can buy a can of breadcrumbs if you want. I just didn't want to add any more stuff to the kit in my car. And that's one of the things when you're camping, you want to economize. You want to get the most flavor for the least amount of space. And this is like a, a stale sandwich round I almost have a quarter cup of it, as promised. I don't want to overdo the bread. I don't want to underdo the bread. But it is critical. That's, what, that's the difference between meatloaf and a um, hamburger, is you've got to add some bread to it. Okay, that looks like it's about right. And you can add more or less to taste. Just try it this way the first time through, and then make it your way. And the next thing we're going to add, of course, is our egg. Oops. Okay, that was less than graceful. But if you saw, if you could see the way I'm sitting, it is not pretty. In fact, I could probably be arrested in in uh, nine out of ten cities for what I'm doing right now. And then what we'll do is just grab this and start mixing it. This is part of our backwoods food processor, A.K.A. hands, and. You know, you just want to get all these ingredients mixed in. If you have a bowl, you can use it. But, you know, when I'm primitive camping, use the, the more bowls and stuff you use, the more you got to clean and the more water you got to bring. And it's just not easy. If you're in a, like a KOA campground and, um, you know, they have tons of water and you don't have to worry about it, then go to town. Make it, make this however, however you want. But I am out here in the middle of nowhere trying to make a meatloaf burger because because to tell you the truth this is truly what I'm eating and I need comfort food I've been on the road a long time and I need the taste of meatloaf to take me home and I'm going to be out here for a few more weeks so um, this is really a good time for me to have this and if you're at home and you really feel homesick for home this is something that's uh, fun to make too meatloaf burgers who would have thunk it I mean, well, I guess I did. And there's probably some other people who thought of this, but I don't, I don't know them. I've never seen their recipes. So I'm hoping this is like a step-by-step -step chef original program. Meatloaf Burgers, the movie. Okay. This is looking pretty good and mixed. You can see it's nice and getting nice and uniform. And I'll add the um, spices as it's cooking and they'll get really worked in at the surface 
and that's where you want your salt. If you, if I work the salt into it now, you won't taste it, and you'll have to keep adding salt. I like to salt, I'm drooling, and pepper stuff on the surface. Okay, so that's pretty. And this is gonna make us two meatloaf burgers. And I can't wait to have those fixins either. Yep, it's gonna be like sitting in my living room, not watching TV, but watching a beautiful sunset through the trees and, um, and hearing absolutely nothing but the occasional bird singing. And if you've never been to Mount St. Helens, this is something to see. It is absolutely something. It, bl it blew up when I was a mere lad of <coughs> in 1980. I mean, it is just something to see. There are still logs laid out on their sides 40 years later uh, from that explosion. It was that big. And the mountain itself is rebuilding itself as I speak, and it explodes apparently every 125 years. And if you keep eating healthy with the step-by-step -step chef, you might just make it. I know I'm gonna. I'm gonna be around for that next explosion. <laughs> I hope. So let me show you how to cook this. Okay, I'm an old man by law. You have to indulge me. Please read the instructions on how to light your propane stove and try it out outdoors and never indoors uh, for your safety and make sure it works before you hit the road. Mine has worked consistently. There's the hiss. Here's the flamethrower and it's lit. So I'm just going to let this preheat for about a minute and then we'll drop the burgers into it. Okay, now this is my small non-stick fry pan. It has preheated for a minute and we're going to put number one in. There we go. Got a nice little sizzle sound going. And here's number two. Now we're going to salt. Pepper. And garlic salt to taste. And you can always add all of this at the table too, but this just gives the meat a little bit of a season. Now, what we're going to do is keep an eye on these burgers, turn the heat down if it starts to smoke, if it starts to cook too fast, but we're going to watch for the juice to run on the top on both of the burgers, and then we'll flip them. And then we'll wait for the juice to run again, which means it's cooking all the way through, and then we'll flip it back through. Usually, depending on the um, power of your um, propane stove, it will take about five minutes to a side. So a total of 15 to 20 minutes of cooking time. So let's see what happens. And honestly, when you're camping, it can depend on the temperature outdoors, the amount of wind, and the altitude you're working with. So I have this up on medium, about three quarters um, full heat. So I'm just turning it down a little bit because it looks like it's getting a little bit um, excitable. And I'll be back in about five minutes and we'll see where we're at. So five minutes in, I see the juices starting to run on the top of our down home meatloaf burgers. Oh, look at that. That's a crispy meatloaf. So we just flip it. And again, adjust the heat as needed flip it, and we're just going to let this, this side cook too, and get the juices to come up on the top. I'm going to lower the heat a little bit because we got some, we got some high heat action going on, and I want to make sure these cook all the way through. So I'm just turning the heat down a little, slow it down a little bit. It's very hard to calibrate propane stoves when you're first starting out, and then thereafter, but wow, that's going to be a tasty meatloaf burger. So I'll see you in another five minutes. 
And here we are back again, five minutes later. The juices are starting to run on the top. It's running clear, so I know it's cooking through. But I'm gonna give it a flip. Oh, this is just like meatloaf. Yum, yum. Give it a flip. Give it about five more minutes, just to make sure it's cooked all the way through. Because honestly, I do not recommend rare meatloaf. I like mine well done. So we'll give it about five more minutes, make sure it's cooked through and then it's ready to serve. Okay, so here we are back again. The juices have stopped running. I know this is cooked through. It's done. We're just gonna take this off the stove, turn the stove off, and look at this. This is like a meatloaf where all of the pieces are crispy. You might decide to make your meatloaf like this from now on. So congratulations, look at what you just did. You just made these delicious meatloaf burgers out in the middle of nowhere, or maybe you made it at home. But let me caution you, when you're cleaning up the pans after making this, if you're camping, don't clean them anywhere near your tent because once the bears get a smell of this, they're gonna come looking for some meatloaf burger. So don't do that. And if you're at home, don't clean this anywhere near your mother-in-law. It's just a recommendation. Anyways, if you like this recipe, please check out my website, stepbystepchef.com. There you will find a free printable recipe for this, for the meatloaf burgers, and over 175 other delicious dishes. Not only that, but you will find videos of me showing you how to make it. Uh, most of them are not out in the great outdoors, but they're still fun. I, I mean, I think so. The other thing you will find as part of cooking and camping with a step-by-step -step chef is step-by-step -step videos on how to camp. I'm gonna show you how to tent camp. And you don't have to come out in the middle of nowhere to tent camp. You can go to a KOA, you can go to a county park, a state park, something where there's a whole bunch of people and even the bears won't show up. I mean, there are so many different ways to camp. I hope you give it a try, but check out my videos on stepbystepchef.com for some tips that will show you how to do it comfortably. So my name's Larry Richardson. I am your step-by-step -step chef. I'm gonna go get my mashed potatoes, corn and gravy, and I'm gonna have a feast. I'll see you in the next episode. Yep, that's meatloaf. <laughs>